is a founder, investor, executive chairman, and entrepreneur who is an authority on beauty and wellness with a global track record of incubating and launching brands. Tracy co-founded the Hatch Beauty brand Incubator in 2009 and has since led highly successful development strategies and launches for popular brands including Nature Well by Jewel, Nuance by Salma Hayek, Bliss Color, Found Active, and Orlando Pita Hair Care. In January 2021, Tracy launched the Potential to Powerhouse podcast and digital platform. The multifaceted brand concept goal is to empower women in business and life through the shared wisdom, enhanced community, mindset elevation, and giving back. Her awards and honors include 2019 Fashion and Beauty Awards for Beauty Service Provider of the Year, EUI Entrepreneur of the Year 2017, and Election to the Committee of 200 an organization of the most successful women business leaders globally. Um, I am here today with Tracy Holland. Hello, Tracy. Hi. You are the founder or, um, of this new venture called Potential to Powerhouse. Yes. And that's what we're going to be talking about mostly today. But the very first thing that I want to get into is a little bit of your journey as an entrepreneur and how you kind of got here. Sure. Well, I think um, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. My poor father would tell you that since I was 12 uh, or when I started my first pie business and had my sisters out selling pies door to door. Um, and of course he shut that down quickly because I took over the kitchen. <laughs> and then when I was uh, before grad or undergrad, in undergrad, going to grad school, um, started a business with a business partner of mine where she had invented uh, scented nail polish as a new technology. She was a chemist, so she formulated it successfully, which was a miracle because she and I had been working on this concept for quite some time. And we built this first scented nail polish business in the U.S. Um, so I've been an entrepreneur all of my life that I can remember. Mm -hmm. And I think, frankly, it's a combination of just loving to see the momentum of creating something and the value that it brings to people and the joy that they have when they first touch it, feel it, hold it, experience it. That has always been my true passion. And then I figure I'm going to find a way to finance this or the money will come and, and I'll figure it out. Um, and that's really how I've built my career. And so potential to powerhouse is truly a vision come true for me because in my journey as an entrepreneur, there are so many lonely moments, so many times where you hit a wall, whether you can't raise capital, you hear the word, no, you're trying to figure out if you can have children, you're trying to find the love of your life and have children within this like weird five-year period of fertility while trying to have this epic career. And I think we all are holding this secret that says we're supposed to try and get all of this done ourselves with a smile. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, you know, there were so many lonely moments and especially as a CEO or someone at the top of your organization, you can't really confide that into your, with your employees. Yeah. And so I was struggling to find other women to share that experience with and through my journey have met so many powerhouse successful women that have blown my mind <laughs> and gives me goose skin. And so I thought, what a gift would it be that we could all come together under the premise of really having an open heart with a vulnerable mind and saying, this is where we stood at your stage and how we did it. And it's a combination of being in the right place at the right time, luck, knowing who you know, trusting yourself, having faith, listening to your intuition. And so there's no hockey stick, perfect situation. No. And let's talk about it so that people get the real deal instead yeah. of just pretending with the Wall Street Journal articles that show your CV and all these wins. It's like, yeah, there are a lot of wins, but there are also some stops that along the way. Oh, that's amazing. You know, I'm, you're saying all this and having kind of taken that journey few times myself um you just like you said everything that just hit so close and I think 
Like I can speak to that a lot because I've, I, it feels so lonely. And I think we all have a different struggle, you know, like the, we're able to, like for me, very creative and able to create things and make things happen, be very quick and make connections. And then, and I think this might be a big thing for a lot of women in business is the capital part or like, how do you take that next step or who do I go to or how do I ask? I think there's always um, that challenge of, mm -hmm. of like, how do I ask and how do I approach it where it's not gonna come across as just like, I can't do this myself. Um, and now I have to ask you to help me. And I, mm -hmm. I know for me, that's always a struggle. And I think that might be for a lot of entrepreneurial women, um, along with all the other things that you mentioned, um, children and life and wanting everything and reading a million articles that show these women doing crazy things and you aspire to be like them. And you're just like, you get stuck sometimes in, totally. in these spaces. And totally. so it leads perfectly into this this new venture that you have, um, Potential of Powerhouse. And just, I guess, explain what that, what it is, what this, um, I guess the first part of it, I don't, I know you have a podcast. So I don't know if you want to talk about the podcast first or the actual summit that you have coming up. Um, well, it's such a magical experience because in my last business, Hatch Beauty, we were, we're a beauty and wellness incubator. So we incubate brands to make women and men feel great. And it's always been a joy to go into someone's house and see our product and have, and say, oh, we make that. And they're like, oh my gosh, I love this product. And here's why. And, and so I spent 10 years or 12 years now, um, as the co-founder and now and CEO, and then moved into this executive chairman role about two months prior to COVID hitting. Oh, wow. And it was frankly due to meeting myself in a spiritual place where I thought, you know, there's something in me that still has yet to really touch women the way I want to in a way that makes a real impact. And it's fun to see them use the product that I make, but I think there's so much more. And Oprah has always been one of my guiding lights because as her story really resonates for me because I had such a ch challenging childhood and hearing no and being in a tough childhood situation, you uh, sometimes don't know how to get to the other side of that and what that could look like. So Potential to Powerhouse as a podcast really originated during COVID as a way for women to relate to one another on the, in their real story telling around their real journey um, to success, much like, and I think Oprah has been an incredible uh, icon for me and, and a, a, a purveyor of thought because of her vulnerability and willingness to tell the real story. She doesn't tell the, let me tell you, I'm a billionaire story and how successful I am. She talks about you know, I was raped. I was abused by my mother. I was abused by my grandmother. Um, I had some of these childhood traumas and I'm still working through it. Mm. Like there's not this point in time where money just made it all go away. And I so got her. I was like, not only do I get her, but a lot of the women that I'm in this circle with have had very similar stories. Her story in many ways is our story. And yet at this point, not being Oprah, many of these women are hiding or maybe covering up or making light of some of that in order to not talk about the hard stuff, right? And I thought, gosh, I wonder if we are more open about sharing some of these things, if there can be not only healing, but like an all ships rise concept mm -hmm. where we can feel the connectivity of the fact that these things that did happen that were traumatic are the reason we're the most epic, beautiful people we are. And without them, we would never be who we are. So there's this incredible way to turn that story of pain and heartbreak into something that was really important for our growth. And I tried the first one and then the second one and the third one. And I kept thinking, gosh, there will be a point in time where I have to make a decision. Is this a heartfelt 
you know, entrepreneurial heart journey conversation, or is this really like, here's my business CV and all the things that I've done in my life. And oh, by the way, I've had some of these pivot moments. And and each of the 25 women I've had the privilege of speaking to, some of whom are very open about some of those things and some of whom, you know, feel like they'll touch on it, but they don't want to go there yet, has also helped me appreciate that each of us is in our own journey to unpeel back or unlayer some of the layers of things that we've gone through. And that's okay too, Mm. because we're not all at the same place. And some of us have, and you hear these stories, have reached epic success and have stopped and said, I'm still not fulfilled. Mm. I'm still not feeling joy. I don't know what happiness feels like. And they've reached pinnacles of success without the joy, which requires us all to kind of step back and still go through the unpeeling of those layers. Yeah, right? Sense. Yeah, it makes so much sense. And maybe together, I mean, I think a lot of that spirituality and that side of things, I know when you can raise yourself up, but then also raise up as a group, that can heal a lot of things a lot faster together, which I don't know if a lot of people really think of it that way. Um, When you work on yourself, it helps, but then if you can do that together and get together and really talk about these stories and these journeys and besides it making you feel good that others are on that path, that also may help when you're clearing that and you're getting those underlying, maybe low vibe energies cleared up not just helping yourself, but can also help a huge group of people. Um, A thousand percent. Yeah. So I feel like what you're saying, that's what that that's doing. Yeah. (laughs) And that's amazing. That's just amazing to be able to do that. Um, I was going to ask you, what is the focus? But that is, sounds like that's the huge focus here in this, um, this summit that you're having. Um, is that what kind of led you to doing this virtual event, being able to talking to these women and then just seeing that the, the, this was a good platform to maybe reach out to more and have more uh, other people be able to be involved and see and listen? Yeah, that's the goal. I mean, day one is external mastery hmm. as what we're referring to it really, which is what I would say for those who are like, oh, I don't want to go there with the internal mastery work yet. I'm still on this path of f- focusing on my career. Mm-hmm. Then then they can just take a look and focus on day 1 which is you know really about what it takes to follow your entrepreneurial passion and build something you believe in and that's Catherine Power and Cameron Diaz talking about green good for you brands mm-hmm. and green good for you healthy living which is both representative of both who they are as human beings but also now come through them as entrepreneurs in hugely, highly successful, different ventures that they are both involved in. And then after that, we're having a conversation with, and I get goose skin thinking about it, but Janice Bryant uh, Howard. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Um, So Janice Bryant Howard, Howroyd. H O W R O Y D. She uh, is the 36th wealthiest woman in the United States, one of 11 children, oh African American woman from nothing, from zilch, built a billion and a half dollar business in Act One. That's insane. And she's on a panel with Christy Hefner, who was uh, chairman of the board and CEO of Playboy Enterprises, oh my Hefner's <laughs> daughter. Yeah, and moderated by Pat Mitchell who is, you know, former president of PBS and CNN and wrote Dangerous Women and talks about what it takes to be a risk taker. All three of these women are just epic, you know, in their own right, talking about what it means to be CEO of your own life, Mm, meaning how to be the curator of who you want to be and who you are in a room, the presence that you have, the people you choose to spend time with, and how you want to think about your building your own CEO of your own life. So I think that should be epic. And then we have um, 
building an empire around three media titans. And those women are going to be talking about not only how they are so well known and prominent in the media, but also that they are doing good with the faces that they are in these di di different platforms. Um, so I think day one and then several breakout sessions. So we have a woman who was an FBI agent who turned into an entrepreneur and built a billion dollar business in the healthcare space. Um, she's incredible. We have Angela Scott, who's mm -hmm. a designer, fashion designer, who was a foster child and lived in the foster system and then went to a home at one point when she was uh, a girl in her uh, around 11 and what it took for her to break out of her mindset and build a, a very successful entrepreneurial business. And so it's really around day one, external mastery, day two is internal mastery. So around energetics, alignment, hormones, accountability on e exercise and lifestyle. So Teddy Mellencamp is going to be talking about what it means to be accountable to yourself on your goal making. And um, so I think Hmm. It's, it has a breadth of things available to everyone who I think it's targeted for women, but it's also for very smart men. Yeah. I was because just gonna, we I want just, men to be involved. I was just thinking that to myself. I said, you know, I think there's probably a lot of men out there that would hear this and say like, they don't, women, we tend to be more on the emotional side of things and want to connect on both externally and internally a little bit more than men do or slowly that's changing but I feel like there's some men that may say like hey you know <laughs> I need this I've worked so hard you know making yeah. money and never yep. focusing on my myself um my dad my yeah a lot my dad's uh, an entrepreneur and there's something he always used to say when we were my, me and my sister were growing up he said he would always like look at a person when he was working with them and see how they took care of themselves, you know, and what thought they put into their exercise or their daily habits, mm -hmm. rituals and things that they had, because mm -hmm. he thought he felt like that would affect their work and how mm -hmm. they came to work every day and how they showed up, you know, like if they had some type of routine, whatever it might be, they may also apply that and how they show up to their job. And that always Absolutely. stuck in my head. Yeah, it just, yeah. it always stuck in my head for myself that I always thought about that and like, how am I showing up and what am I doing in my daily life um, that is going to be reflected in my, in how I am as uh, in my career or working, you know, with people and clients and all of that. So I feel like that plays a big role here in what you're saying as well. It's like that external part is so important. And if we don't have those daily rituals, whatever it might be to make you feel good, maybe meditating, working out a healthy lifestyle, it will affect everything else. <laughs> it's um, so true. And I just interviewed Dr. Acacia Parks, who's the chief science officer of Happify. Oh. And she literally studies happiness for a living. And she not only has success metrics for how to ensure happiness for yourself and how to recalibrate your happiness and be aware of your level of happiness, because it fluctuates day to, minute to minute, day to day, right? Yeah. So ensuring that it's not necessarily based on a set of circumstances, but that it's something resonant that lives within you. Mm -hmm. But her study has shown that people who can live to the right of that happiness scale, feeling fulfilled, feeling joyful, um, more than not during their day, and can recalibrate quickly based on the circumstances they face, live seven years longer than the average person. Oh, wow. So That's seven years is a meaningful number of years. Like right. I have a 10 year old and I take seven years away. He's still in diapers, right. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my, your grandparents passed away. If you had some seven more years with them. Can you imagine? Know. It'd be amazing. That's a huge difference. And I've mm -hmm. never, I've, the recalibrating happiness. I mean, that sounds very interesting to me and something I would want to know more about because it does fluctuate. I mean, it's weird how you could wake up and feel good and then suddenly not feel good, but then again, flip back to feeling good or feeling Well, she, she's on day two because the science of yeah. happiness and there's um, another woman that we have from a, a business that is speaking about well-being 
and she has an expertise in well-being. And so I think the differentiation for people so they understand what does happiness really mean? And then is it elusive or is it tangible and how do I get it? And then joy, what does that mean? And then the feeling of well-being, what does that mean? And there are really three distinct legs on a stool, each independent of, the, of one another. Um, but there's an under, once we understand what it feels like and we go, oh, that's that, right? Right. Because as, as hard driving women, a lot of times we don't connect into how we're feeling. We're so in our head no, yeah. that we're, I, and how often do you hear someone, your colleague or someone who's like, oh, it's three o'clock. I haven't even eaten yet. Yes. It's just like the basics. Yeah. And it really right? is that you're not thinking about it. Your day it's is going. Basics. Yeah. That's yeah. It. But are you happy? Like checking mm. in and, mm. and. And asking yourself as you're going through your day, am mm. I feeling joy? Does wow. this bring me, whoops, does this bring me happiness, this experience right now? Am I enjoying this? Am I looking forward to it? When I feel dread and I need to do a call, yeah. um, is this dread coming from a place? What, what's going on here? And your mention of men, yeah. it's so true. I, um, I was talking to a friend of mine who lives in New York and he was saying that he was, had been having dinner mm. with a great colleague of his a wall street guy. And the guy was like, I wonder if I tell my employer that I got in an accident, car accident that I could kind of like opt out of the next couple of months, but nothing so severe that I couldn't live, but like a few broken ribs, something that would be hard to prove. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, you know, I couldn't believe it. Like we were fantasizing about how to shift out of what we were obligated to go do right? with some meaningful excuse without, you know, with some meaningful excuse yeah. without getting in trouble. Right. Right. <laughs> And I listened to that and I thought, gosh, you know, there's so many people who feel those Sunday blues that feel, you know, worried and anxious about getting up Monday morning and going to work and doing what they do. Mm. And so all of that is important to take into consideration. It is. It is. It's so important. And if anything, I think now we're really seeing that so much more because we had a chance to really stop and see life from a completely different perspective with everything. And maybe that's why more people are evaluating it differently, you know? Exactly. What, yeah. Like, what do I want to be doing? And I want to be happy, you know? I don't that's want to right. be these unhappy. Um, and we have that luxury though. And I know that I'm always grateful and aware that, that you know, there, there is intrinsic needs of food, shelter, water, right? Like we have covered those basics. Um, and I understand and I acknowledge, and I'm grateful for being able to have the moment in time, a gap in which we can all consider that. Right. Exactly. Because I also acknowledge, recognize, and, um, and want to just say, you know, there were times where I didn't have those basics. And I, I knew that feeling of having to scramble. You know, I used to wait tables and mm -hmm. my tips from the, that night hmm. were what was going to pay my rent. And because my dad wasn't pleased that I hadn't gone to college for this mm -hmm. year period, he basically said, don't call me for money. I'm out. Yeah. So if you run into hardship, you have one person to go to. That's the person in the mirror. Right. And that was tough. I That's was scary scared because That's I scary. thought, my God, you know, I'm like two tip nights away from being out on my, right. I mean, on my like butt, <laughs> literally sick. And if you don't have those basic needs, it's yeah. So right. I get, I also get, and I can appreciate that this is a moment in which those who are in this place mm -hmm. of being able to take this time to consider some of these things are in that, that spot. Yeah. And that's pretty remarkable. That is, that really is. Um, what is, all right. So there's two days to this, to the, to it. Can you do both or um, can you do one and not the other, or is it? Sure. 
Okay. I mean, here's the thing. If you, I think all of us are, and this is why we're doing certain, um, I think it's 15 or 20 tickets in person mm -hmm. because some of our speakers oh, will that. be coming in okay. in yeah. person. Oh, that's nice. So, and I feel like that connection for people is really important. It so is. we do have people coming in from all over the country and we'll that's have amazing. those spots, but we'll do, you know, we'll be COVID safe and smart. Yeah. Um, but for those who want to come and can't make it for two days, because life happens, we have kids, we have jobs, we have things to do. There's always the recorded session for the next five or seven days, I think, after the event. Oh, so there's so, so much opportunity to be able to do it and, and see both. Yeah. And if you're in for half session and you have to go to work, you can right. come back and watch the rest. The only difference is based on the ticket type, you can ask questions and be part of the participants. That makes sense. So it's just, yeah, um, yeah it's just that. Is there any certain, um, like, I guess, how can people sign, there'll be, there, there's a link to sign up and get tickets for that? Yeah, it's potentialtopowerhouse.com backslash summit. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And if they yeah. use a code, I can give it to you. They okay. can have 50, yeah. 50, 50 percent off. Oh, wow. All the tickets for your, folks. yeah. I'll it's called trade. You have to do all caps. Okay. But it's Tracy 50. Tracy 50. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think there's so many, um, I don't want to just say women, but people that will be watching and um, I think will want to sign up and get tickets. So um, especially after this, uh, us talking, it's just, um, I could go on. <laughs> I feel like I could go on and on with you <laughs> because there's so much. I can't um, wait to meet you in person. I know. There's like, I just, I, I'm inspired in so many ways. I'm literally going to get off of here and go like Google and do everything <laughs> because it's just so amazing. And it's like for you to even take the time to do this and have this conversation and talk about it personally and, you know, what you're doing and then, and then a little bit more about this, that what you've created um, and making it personal. You know, I think mm. it makes such a difference. It's, I, for me and for a lot of people any, signing up for anything, um, you know, you want to connect to it in, a, in another way rather than just saying like, oh, okay, it's another, you know, course or class or workshop or whatever it might for be. For sure. Um, and we're all wanting to reach that like ultimate potential of what we could be and yeah. having the women, the people, I mean, everyone you mentioned, I think are all women that really have an understanding of how to get there in some way, mm -hmm. you know, and can really teach that. I mean, Catherine Powers, I've, I've, I've followed her since, um, her website, um, who, what, where, yeah. Who, what, where, and actually it's funny when they came out with their book, I went to their book signing in New York and I was, yeah, I remember being, I think it, I want to say it must've been like 2008 or 2009, right around then, maybe a little earlier. And I just, they were, she was so, they were so nice. It was like, she's you know, so remarkable. It's amazing. And when you're in business or creating business, there's a lot of like intimidation that you feel yeah. and you don't know if how you're going to come across, you're afraid to even, I mean, I, I don't know if everyone is, but I know for me, it's like, I don't want to go up to this person or I don't know how to speak to someone. And mo most of the time, I think, a lot of people want to share their experiences and want to give yeah. back in any way that they can and help other women be successful. And it's just yeah. like having that confidence and knowing that that door is open and knowing that other people are open to talking to you or wanting to help or, you know, are willing to even just do a book signing and go up to them and say hi and take a picture and sign a book. <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah, it's nice. Um, so I'm excited. Uh, to hear, I mean, for this and for more people to know about it. And I think um, the fact that you're giving this opportunity and putting this out there is just incredible for entrepreneurs. And it'll be interesting to see how people build their businesses from the tools that you're able to provide. I can't wait to just hear the feedback. I mean, yeah. each of these women have inspired me so much and, and, and men. Because we actually have John Amaral, who was, if you ever saw him on the Goop um, Netflix yeah. Yeah. Um, video, he has incredible ability to, to move energy. Yes, I, I remember that episode perfectly. I watched all of them. And 
actually wrote about it on my blog because I thought that was so amazing how he moves energy and yeah. not many people understand it. And I was so happy that he's putting that out there in such a like huge platform. Yeah. Um, Cause I don't think energy is something that not a lot of people kind of understand. Get. Can, yeah. And that you can move it and that yeah. sometimes you have these blocks in your body that are affecting everything in your life. And it might just be, you know, need to be moved from what maybe from childhood or trauma or something that you had go on in your life. Um, and if someone can help do that for you and get you to that next place, it's amazing. So I didn't know he was, I didn't know he was speaking. I guess. Yeah. He's going to show everyone a technique for being in your house or in your office, how you can move your own energy no way. to unblock it. And it works because I do it. Catherine Power does it. Yeah. And many of the people. Um, is it similar to Reiki? Is it like Reiki, doing Reiki? I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I, um, so I, know that. I know that it's very, you know, one of the things that blows my mind is that our energetic field can be measured right on average seven feet yes. in front of us before we even walk into, into a space. It's seven feet. And, and you hear people who say, oh, I just got goosebumps or mm. my hair stood on end or something, you know, that's people feeling into what's happening in that space. Some people can't do big events because all of those people around them make them anxious. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of inbound inner energetics. True. I didn't understand the harness, the power of harnessing energy until I started working with John mm. um, a few years ago and really understood that ensuring that I was aligned internally to where I needed to be, to be my optimal self, whether that be as a mother or as an entrepreneur or as a lover, as a friend, like all of those things require being really settled in with who you are energetically and, and then getting clear on what all that stuff is that you're carrying around that may not be yours still. Yeah. I think there's a lot of that <laughs> for sure. from even, you know, generations that you just, it, cause I, you, you see patterns. It's like, sometimes you wonder why, like, why do I even do this? I don't know where I, this came from. And then it's like mm -hmm. your grandmother did it or, you know, that's right. Somewhere else in your family. That's right. The same that's thing. Right. That's <laughs> like, right. That's right. Why yeah. am I taking this on? They never cleared it. They never that's worked right. on it. And that's so, right. Of course. Yeah. So Oh, so he'll be there day two. That's incredible. <laughs> that's absolutely incredible. Um, yeah. I'm going to put all the links to this um, in the box below, in the YouTube box below for everybody to find it. Um, what on social media is it? Are you easy to find on? Uh, Potential to Powerhouse on IG or we have a private Facebook community. So you should jump into that because yeah. that's where we will be streaming live okay. for those who come for free because yeah. the ones... Um, there are tickets for free that people can get oh, wow. and yeah, they can, um, jump into our private Facebook group, potential to powerhouse or IG, uh, and Tracy Holland mindset is my that IG my next question. <laughs> yeah. It's yours. And you're welcome to yeah. come on in. I will for sure. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, thank you, Tracy, so much for this chat. It thank was you. amazing. Uh, hopefully we'll get to talk again more. And uh, I can't wait to share this with everyone. I'll be sharing it on all my social and um, just learning a lot more and helping women get to where they want to be in their life. Um, That's right. Every way. <laughs> That's right. And enjoying the journey. Yeah. Because after having pushing myself as hard as I did and building a company, you know, over seven years, our run rate, 500 million in revenue, self-made, not a dime of investor money and found myself burned out, sad, yeah. depressed and in a lonely marriage mm. and like, not, this is not what I thought it was. So the idea of like, wait a sec, I just yeah. bypassed the last seven years yeah. to get to the other side of this pot of gold. And here I am, and this is it. You're not happy. Now yeah. what? <laughs> I feel that I can. Now totally, what do we do? Yeah, I, I, it's always a very in, a crazy journey. I have to say, when you choose to go out on that path. 
That's right. So hopefully, uh, I hope to get some good tidbits. I hope you do. And I I can't wait to hear what you think. Yeah, I'm excited. And I can't wait to see you there. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Tracy. So much. All right. All right. Have a good day. Okay. Bye.